The darker side of gaming generally involves how the games are built, who builds them, and how they're paid for. Star Citizen breaks the mold on two of these three questions. And these questions are very closely intertwined, they both influence each other accordingly. And once you spend enough time thinking about it, the important question begins to show itself. Today I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to talk about money, specifically purchasing ships, how you can save money doing it, and why I actually still advise against it. Thank you for coming to this Tomato Talk. And thanks to my newest Patreon supporters, Captain Octotits, Mike J. Stone, Kevin Lytle, and Mike M. So before I get into this topic, I'd like to make everybody aware that you can actually go see Star Citizen's financials on the website. Last year's official financials for the Star Citizen developers are at the end of the next year every year. So that you can see if employees are getting paid and boats are being bought. Now when buying a ship in Star Citizen, you're greeted with two choices, a normal purchase or a war bond purchase. This is a very simple delineation, consider the third question I had asked earlier, how is the game being paid for? There is no publisher and there is very minimal private investment. The majority of the funding comes from pledges and purchases from the backers. Backers give money for the project, the game continues, CIG allows that backer to reserve a ship for that price. And while this is meant to be about the money given to the company rather than the ship received, due to CIG's own messaging and marketing, this has become for a lot of people much more about the ship received. Because of this, deals are meant to be made, savings are there to be met, and what's meant to be funding a project is now very much an exchange of goods. This isn't inherently a bad thing, it can just get carried away. Now, going back to that original purchase we were talking about, if we buy the ship normally, we pay an additional amount. In this situation, about 8%. Instead, though, we could purchase the war bond version and save some money. This is a distinction made due to the early practice of taking ships or the value of those ships and trading them into the store so that you could purchase other ships to try those out. Essentially, you could continuously trade in your ships for store credit and use that store credit in dollars to buy other ships. 315P to a Reliant Skirmisher, 315P to a Mustang Delta. These are all examples of ships that are always on sale being the exact same price as a limited ship. Buy the upgrades and throw them into your account. It costs nothing and gives you options in the future. It was pretty nice. However, this is a chance for the game to be funded further. So now credits cannot be used for Warbond purchases incentivizing older backers to start putting in more cash into the game just to get those ships for a little bit cheaper. But now that you know all about these war bond sales, I'm gonna introduce you to the cross chassis upgrade or the CCU. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of stuff. To really help explain CCUs, how you can use them, and more about how they can help you save some money in Star Citizen, my good friend and fellow YouTube creator Execute is here from InfoRunners as the stand-in expert. Execute. What exactly are CCUs usually used for? Um, so they basically allow you to upgrade um, one ship to another, and basically you can go from one ship to the next. Okay. How how is that used to save money though? So um, basically, by using Warbond CCUs that they introduced at not this Invicted sale but the last, um, by spending cash money you can um, get a discount on these ships and they release multiples of these and by chaining them together, so instead of just going, I wanna buy an entire ship for the full dollar amount, you can literally go, I wanna, I wanna buy it almost in small little pieces and stitch them together and you're getting a discount on all those little pieces. And then so when you put them together, you can bring the price right down uh, on an entire ship. I wanted to go back to something that I had mentioned before, War Bond and the idea behind it of, of the whole cash money. That's something I thought was just for purchasing ships, but that can be applied to upgrading ships as well, it sounds like. So something is called, say, a War Bond CCU that is essentially a CCU that's being purchased with cash. That is correct. Okay. So if this is a way to save money, for somebody who wanted to do these sort of chaining together of CCUs, why would a, a newcomer or somebody else who's more casually playing this game want to stay away from them? 
because the system is very convoluted and confusing, that, mm. that's that's the short answer. Um, it is very, very hard to understand. Mm. The, the way I'd almost explain it is ad hocly put together because the game has been almost 10 years old and they've had to build the system as the game got more and more popular. Um, and due to that fact, it's just very confusing. It's just gotten so large that it can be too complex for somebody who's just jumping into it. It can even even for somebody who hasn't or who has been involved for a long time, it sounds like you're saying, can easily get confused by this system and it's just safer to avoid trying to take advantage of this mm. system and just do whatever you would normally do. Yeah, well, everyone wants to save money, but they're worried that they're going to make a mistake. Yeah, and, that's and it's very easy to make a mistake, it sounds like. Um, you can make a mistake, but um, you can melt it and rebuy CCUs, so you can mm -hmm. always kind of fix that mistake. Okay. But the problem here lies in that you can't unfix it back to cash. So once you've put that many money in, you can never get it back out. It's always in the game. Unless you find someone that you can sell something to. That's, right. that's the difference. And again, as time passes, if you've got something that you've sat on and held on to, it can appreciate in value. And that's also a whole nother conversation trying to sell these assets in any yep. way whatsoever anyways. So I, I, I did a, a diagram mm -hmm. that you're going to redo and, and probably show off. Yeah, uh, and I'll put it up on the screen right now. Yeah, so me trying to explain it to you probably took a good hour. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I'm going to get you to explain it, hopefully, uh, to people looking at the diagram now. So he tried to explain it to me, but it took a while. But now that I get it, here is a summary. And I know, another new shirt, but this video has taken some time. A full cash price Polaris at Invictus Week sale in 2021 is $750. It's a lot. Now you could fill that up with one large cash deposit a normal purchase, or you could buy different ships, all containing small discounts so you can spend a little less cash here and there, and ultimately at the end you will have saved $225, and that price you pay could also be supplemented by store credit. And this example is one of many possibilities. A lot of casual backers practice this with every sale of a new affordable vehicle, snatching them up for their use later in the game, almost guaranteeing more money in the future to come into the game. Many can make great use of this process, as unnecessarily difficult as it may be, but most should probably steer clear of it. So it is, right. it, it can be interesting to people who really want to buy big ships, but I think, as I always say on this channel, I am, I am of the thought that you guys, you should not buy these ships. You honestly, you should only be buying the ships if you are very much trying to support the game and if you know for a fact you're not mm. going to have the time to earn them because these ships are not going to be expensive in game. Well, well, a plug for you, Space Tomato, in the card up above. Uh, but um, you did a, uh, an episode, uh, uh, a video yourself recently on forty-five dollar ship is all you need, and that yep. is really it. Yeah, that all, is all you, you have need. to do is buy the initial game. Do not spend extra money. Yeah. There's enough orgs and, and people out there that already do own the ships, mm -hmm. so find them. Find yeah. some friends that already have them, um, and they're going to be looking for crew. You know, like. Oh, yeah. uh, you don't need any more than one ship now because everyone else is already over invested. You should not be buying ships to have the ship, really. It's not That's a good exactly reason it. to get a ship outside of the game. No. So this system, you said it's become bloated and, and, and over time it's just grown out of proportion. What are some things that you think could happen to fix this or what is a fix that you could see for this? Um, look, I, I think a lot of it started way back when they introduced the problem of war bond. And I, I do see it as a problem because they now, um, you have to, they charge more for credits. So they are essentially devaluing previous purchases. Mm -hmm. um, and also, and, and that also happens with the, the war bond CCs as well. Like to give you an example, we go back to that Polaris, you could get a Polaris of 525. Now the original concept when the actual Polaris came out was 650. So the very first people that brought the ship, they said, to, and it was said at the time when those concepts come out, this is the cheapest you'll ever be able to buy that ship for. Mm -hmm. Well, that is now a lie because of the war bond CCUs. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so basically if they go back to where it was around about, I think it's between 2014 to 2016, where they brought in the war bond, you used to be able to take credit and it was always worth the same that you, you paid for. And mm -hmm. now that's, and now that that's changed, they've devalued 
older money. Um, and now they've brought in this, you know, people stopped spending, so they brought in war bond CCUs to try and fix that problem. So it's a patch upon upon a patch. Mm -hmm. The whole system's probably really complicated and it'd be really great if they could simplify it, mm -hmm. fix the website up a bit to make it a lot easier for new people to understand. You are a proponent of, of the CCUs. You think the system is good, it's just a little broke. I, uh, yeah, I just think it needs to be simplified. I, I, I don't, and I honestly don't know how they would actually want to go about it because there's obviously things in the background from the marketing and the funding that we can't see. Yeah. Right. So it's not it's not a it's not a black and white thing. There's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of gray. All right. Well, if you guys would like to learn more about the subject uh, and these topics in general, learning about the information behind the gameplay, behind the ships and the value of ships in the game, uh, Execute here runs his own YouTube channel, which you can find down in the video description. Tell us a little bit about what InfoRunners is about real quick. Oh, well, we uh, do a lot of topics, in-depth discussion, uh, financial advice on the ships, uh, like we've talked about here. You're an info run as well. It's not just me. Well, uh -huh. I pointed the wrong direction there, but yeah. Um, we've got a few others there as well, Astro Pub, Our Grid, uh, a few others, but we're always, you know, just a uh, community of like-minded folks that talk about stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's always other people there that will help you with CCs as well, if you'd want to jump on the Discord, that is. Yeah. So if you're interested in learning more about these things, uh, whether that be how to avoid them or how to use them and save some money, the link for the Discord server will be down in the video description as well as the YouTube channel. So thank you, Execute, for helping us yeah. out with this and for helping to explain to everybody. No problem, buddy. As I said in the beginning of this video, money and the funding of this game are a little bit different from normal, and they can be a bit rocky and convoluted at times. And I'd like to re-emphasize if you are curious about where this money is going or if the money is even going to the employees of the company, the financials are posted every year and you can find them linked down below. Regardless, these are topics I tend to avoid. And while this is a subject I feel CIG could approach much better and take some advice from the community, it doesn't overshadow what I see in this game and the successes elsewhere. As the game continues to be developed, we need to stay aware of all the aspects of the game. The good, the bad, the ugly, and the uncomfortable. I'd like to thank my friends at the InfoRunners for helping me out with this one, and I'd like to thank you guys for being here to support me. And if you'd like to support more or just get more content, you can always subscribe to the channel. Or you could head over to Patreon.com and become a supporting member for as low as a dollar a month, where you'll get things like early videos, and you'll get to help me reach my goal by the end of the year to keep creating this content. Either way, thank you guys all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks to my top supporters, TK, Valiant15, Ben N, The Alpaca, Holston Coop, The Huntress, Falcus Vipus, Dasek, Guilty Conscious, Extreme Tuber7, and El Gordo.